Hey guys, it's Carl. Welcome back to your first look at the brand new Oppo Find X5 Pro. I'm pretty pumped about this phone because I did a live stream a couple months ago when Oppo announced this little guy, the Mary Silicon X chip. And this is the first NPU chip that they're designing. And this is of course the first phone that Oppo is implementing this into. There was a ton of stuff to check out during the live stream. They actually did a ton of video and photo comparisons against the iPhone, against uh, some of the other flagships that we will of course test out. I know that Oppo is claiming this should be one of the best phones for photography. Obviously we'll have to test that out, but uh, let's take a quick look inside first, see what we've got. So pretty sleek, pretty standard. Standard. It's nice that they include user manuals, of course, warranty info, SIM card slot tool, and a nice little rubber case in case you want a little accessory. Off to the side, here's the phone, which we'll get to in a second. And they do have a supercharger. So this is an 80 watt charger. It's of course not North American. So this will vary on the region depending that you're in. And the phone itself looks ultra sleek. I love just plain white phones with a ceramic finish. It just gives it that stormtrooper look. And according to Oppo word for word, this is a finely glazed nano crystalline ceramic back. It looks sleek, it looks great, and we've seen this design from Oppo before with the camera cutout where the bump kind of mends, or I guess blends into the back so you don't have a place for extra dust, extra little goo to kind of pick up. So it's technically different, but not really new from Oppo. And you'll actually see on the actual camera sensor, this is where it's powered by that new NPU, by Mary Silicon, which we'll get to in a second. Around the rest of the back of the device, it's just all sleek, all in that ceramic white. Of course, you've got Oppo branding, and they have partnered with Hasselblad on the optics on this. And I think a lot of you know Hasselblad is one of the most iconic names in photography lenses and in the optic space. So before we talk about the camera, of course, test that out. Let's power up the phone. And this is powered by ColorOS over Android 12. And it is built around the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 platform with 12 gigs of RAM and you get 256 gigs of storage. And what I love about Oppo, they haven't gone their own custom route like other Chinese manufacturers and gone to their own OS. I'm staring at you Huawei, it still has Google mobile services. It's still great. You still get a really good Android experience. You do unfortunately still get some pre-installed bloatware, but you can always remove those uh, at your heart's content. Over onto the display, 6.7 inches, quad HD. It's adaptive, so up to 120 Hertz. You've got the slightest curve to it. It's uh, you know pretty similar to the Galaxy S22 Ultra in terms of that curve on the side. So you either love or hate that. I personally am a fan of flat screens, but uh, I guess the curve isn't too much. The front is pretty much all display. You have barely any bezeling, perhaps slightly larger on the chin, and you do just have that small little hole punch cutout for that front facing camera, which we'll get to. The biggest thing that is coming to this device is the camera. So Oppo is betting a lot on this camera. So it has a triple lens setup. It's got a 50 megapixel main, 50 megapixel wide, and 13 megapixel telephoto. And it's all built around this new NPU. So what's great about the camera having its own separate chip, it doesn't have to rely on the ISP from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 platform. So it just draws less power. It's more actually power efficient. From the live stream, if you remember, this is what I was super pumped about. It supports 20 bit, 120 dB dynamic range and can process raw 4K video. And normally the NPU would rely on system memory for a lot of that computation, but that slows down processing times, of course, waste energy, waste battery. So Oppo mitigates that with dedicated memory transfer of 8.5 gigabytes per second. And just by launching this camera, I've obviously reviewed Oppo phones now for the past couple of years. It does look noticeably better, but Oppo is so confident about the performance of this. We're actually gonna do a live little test, or I guess not live since I'll have to wait till nighttime. We'll be comparing it to the brand new S22 Ultra and of course the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Um, we'll switch to the second part of the video. Of course, night shots, full comparisons. So uh, part two of the video coming up in a second. Movie magic. Okay, so New Day managed to get a ton of night shots last night uh, with all of these phones and bear with me, it was uh, minus 20, so a tad bit chilly. I've got them all on my computer here, haven't looked at them yet, so let's just pull up this and you can see Find X5 Pro in the middle and flanked by the S22 Ultra, iPhone 13 Pro, had a little night shot here at dinner. All three very similar, the only lights that were on were in fact uh, these candles and you can see the Find X5 Pro, that candle dynamic range is a lot better. You can see on the iPhone, it's a tad bit overblown. Same thing with the Ultra, but you know, all three 
took fairly decent shots. I would maybe say the Find X5 Pro, slightly HDR looking, but it holds its own for sure. Moving on to a shot of Link at his favorite uh, sleeping spot. And you can already off the bat see the iPhone 13 Pro. This is why I kind of don't like the iPhone uh, for night shots. You don't have a dedicated night mode compared to the X5 Pro S22 Ultra. Most Android devices have that separate swipe over mode and sometimes it just doesn't hit it. So uh, you can see right here, the iPhone 13 Pro way underexposed. And I would even say the X5 Pro took the best shot here. The S22 Ultra is looking a bit reddish and Link is uh, nestled lightly there, sleeping away. And he's actually doing the same thing uh, actually right now. So this next shot up that I took in the middle of the street, I don't think I got my angling correct, but you can still see how well each of these phones do. And there is artifacting over on the iPhone 13 Pro. I guess there's artifacting across all three, but it's less pronounced on the X5 Pro in the middle. Once again, dynamic range is slightly better. We are getting a bit more detail here in the middle on the CN Tower compared to the other two. And I think all three actually captured a white balance pretty well. So I'll move on to the next one. So this shot here taken at the Four Seasons, once again, over on the iPhone 13 Pro, you can see some of the areas of this fountain are slightly overexposed. Whereas on the X5 Pro, it just seems to handle dynamic range a bit better. Pavement looks slightly better lit here, but I guess you could argue that that uh, dynamic range almost looks a bit too HDR-y. So I think all three, once again, were pretty decent. On to, I guess, the next photo. This one's an interesting one on a condo just you know across the street. The white balance here, especially for the X5 Pro, is very different to the S22 Ultra and iPhone 13 Pro. In reality, the building does look a bit more yellowish. So the S22 Ultra and iPhone 13 Pro are trying to perhaps overcompensate on that white balance, make it look more white. I think they look better, but in terms of accuracy, the X5 Pro, I think, handled it the best. The building looks you know, yellowish, the lights are yellow. And I will say people are drawn more to the iPhone 13 Pro slash S22 white look. I think my girlfriend, fiance said she preferred those two, but in reality, the X5 Pro is more true to life. Going on to the last one, because my hands ended up freezing. So I just took a photo of a little old trackered Lego build beside me here at uh, the dead of night when I got back inside. And, and you can clearly see here on the touch to focus point, which was the clock on the stadium, just is not in focus here on the S22 Ultra and especially on the 13 Pro, whereas the Find X5 Pro, it was pretty bang on. And I know that photo comparisons are very, very subjective. So you can let me know your thoughts in the comments. So kind of scrub through these photos again to kind of pick your favorites. And I also, uh, before I froze my hands off, just took some 4K night footage of Link running around uh, in his little play area outside. It was cold, that, but uh, stabilization here. seemed to hold up and there wasn't too much uh, noise or artifacting, even though it was in the middle of the night. But anyways, by the time this video goes live, I'm actually heading to Barcelona for MWC, where I'll be doing a full booth tour with Oppo and also doing a real nighttime photography tour when it isn't minus 20, my hands aren't frozen. So stay posted for that vid. This is probably your first look at the Oppo Find X5 Pro. Absolutely love the colorway, love the way this thing looks. And of course that camera, which really, really surprised me with its own dedicated NPU. Remember it's Mary Silicon X. Hope you guys enjoyed this vid and I will try to convince Oppo to give one of these away, whether it's this device or whether I could snag an extra one at MWC. So um, make sure you comment, make sure you sub, and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace.